So I have bad news, but let's, let's do some good news first. Before the video even starts, we're going to do this. I ordered Dakota Digital Gauges, and the I ordered the VHX. The guy that I ordered them from, I got in contact with him, he's a dealer. He uh, sold them to me for cheaper than the cheapest price I've ever seen for them, and he's going to be able to do the same for you soon. So. I'm going to get a final price on what you can tell them to you guys for because mine's a little cheaper because I'm giving them a shout out and stuff. You know, but I'll show you his Facebook page real quick. But he's going to be able to, but he's going to be able to get you gauges cheaper and stuff like that. And also he can get like TMI, all kinds of stuff. When the gauges come, I'm going to do like a whole shout out video for him. He's a cool guy. So this is him. Premier Auto Sales and Performance, and look at that, he's got five stars. He shipped to me, five stars, all that fun stuff, does good work. I'm going to plug him in the description, the video when the gauges come, we unbox them, you're just going to have to subscribe and wait for that. We're going to go through what he carries, what he can get your stuff for, as far as the gauges, but I'm going to get my TMI interior stuff from him eventually. But I ordered the silver face gauges with the uh, blue font. So the bad news, before we get into the video, you'll see it in the video. It's not too bad though. Because if you're new here, you know, sometimes like YouTubers, I'm not to say a YouTuber, I have a thousand subscribers, but YouTubers will upload videos about them literally doing nothing, like changing their air filter. I don't really like to do that. So if I don't have something to upload, I just won't. So sometimes I won't upload for like two weeks. So this is the beginning of the, what I'm going to call like the C10 2.0 or making the C10 unghetto or something. Because there's a couple things, although this truck is very nice, there's a couple things that are kind of ghetto. And like little things that I want to just like touch up. Like there's a couple areas where like something comes through the firewall there and there's no grommet or like little things. The fuel system's really ghetto. Like I rigged that on just to get it running because I didn't was sick of waiting for parts and running out of money when I swapped this. I'm a college kid. So if you haven't watched some of the BMW videos lately where I've mentioned it, the 4L60E is pulled out. You can see down there there's nothing as far as trans goes. Me and my friend Brand pulled it out. We were in real of a time crunch. So we didn't film it. It only took two hours. It's some bell housing bolts and a cross member. And I actually got rid of the trans cross member. So if you're an OG subscriber here, you'll remember the original C10 videos where I taught where I showed you this trans cross member. and it was bare metal. Well, I just painted it now, today. And it's just a tubular one I bought off eBay. And obviously it's gonna go like that under there. So when I get the transmission back from the builder, which should be any day now, I will put the, hook the trans up to the engine and leave my little transmission jack. Let me put this down. And uh, leave the transmission hooked up to the jack but on the engine and I'll level it to where it was before and then I'll bolt that cross member to it and then I'll drill the holes in the frame for that. So that can't get installed until that comes. And the reason it's shaped like that is I can run my exhaust under the, like up in the frame rails now. Before it was that, you can see like shaped like this and that went down under and it was running like right in here and it looked like trash you can see it with the truck parked so we're gonna do that that came bare metal off ebay if i can find it again i'll drop a link it was really hard to find i bought it a year ago so it's not in my ebay history anymore but i painted it with some self-etching primer before i painted it i sanded it with 320 like it recommends in the instructions in here and then funny enough, I had some black paint and I painted it with caliper paint. Because one reason I had the caliper paint, and two, caliper paint is a little more durable than regular spray paint. 
and it withstands 500 degree temperatures. And since the trans cross member, the exhaust is going to be real close, stuff like that. Figured it might help from the paint boiling off. I already had it, so I've got this big uh, cabinet, oil, different stuff. So when I need something, I go in there. But anyway, we're going to put the oil filter on because when I pulled the uh, transmission, a wrench slipped and dented the oil filter and made it leak. And the oil had never been changed in this engine anyway since I cammed it. So I'll crawl under there with this, give you an update while I'm under there putting this on of what's going on under the truck. It's a mobile one. It's a lot longer than the AC Delco one that I had. Still got the receipt in it. Let's see when I bought this in 2016. And what I did was, when I buy the oil and the filter for the BMW, Advance Auto has these deals where the filter comes with it. But the BMW cartridge never works with it. So I just get filters for the C10 or my dad's Sierra. So let's crawl under there, show you what we're doing, what we're working with if you're new, put the filter on. Now, this is the ghetto fuel system here. You can see it's just brake line that I used in my fuel line before with EFI rated line and quick connects to the Corvette regulator that everybody uses. And I had one bolt going through the frame. And then I just ran to an Amazon filter and this rubber line going up to my fuel rail all that held this whole length on I literally just took this bolt out and cut the line and that's what's coming out so we're gonna do a full fuel system like a nice one and that's gonna be in a future video and then when I LS swapped it I got rid of some of these wires so you can see all the wires going to the back are out of the loom and look bad and this is, I just wanted to drive it so we're gonna do like a wire tuck and clean up on the whole truck. You can see I already tucked the wire up there for that O2 sensor. Right there into that clip. So I'm going to clean up what I just spilled when I grabbed part of the rigged fuel system and we'll probably pull the fuel system out in this video too. Maybe next video we'll see but right now we're going to do some oil. This is a uh, GM Performance hot rod oil pan. It's similar to like a Hummer H3 pan or whatever if you hear people use that. So we're going to get some old oil here. Just put it on the O-ring. Need to get a little more up here. Obviously you all have probably changed oil before. But screw it up in there. This is much taller than my AC Delco filter I had before. Well, I failed to change my own oil. Old filter, big hole. New filter, small hole. So apparently a filter for this year's Chevy truck doesn't work with that pan. And this is an AC Delco PF48E. So I'm just going to see what crosses with a PF48 and then get the taller one that crosses. I work at Advance Auto, so it won't be hard. I bought this filter like two years ago. They probably won't return it. So in the next C10 video, I guess, when I change the oil then and tidy up some more wiring, we will uh, probably give this filter away, and I'll just ship it to someone if they have a truck that will fit, because I don't think I'll be able to ship it. I'll look up at work if they won't let me return it, what it fits, and I'll tell you guys when you have it. So that's the bad news. I can't even change my own oil. I guess I'm useless. But the good news is those gauges and the trans is getting built right now with a shift kit. But I'm going to pull out the rest of the ghetto fuel system so you guys can laugh at me and tell me I don't know what I'm doing. And then I'll show you in the upcoming videos a real fuel system and I do know what I'm doing. You can believe me or not, but whatever. Now it's very important that you use an impact on your hose clamps to loosen them because it would just be too hard to do it with a screwdriver. So about the most useful thing you're going to learn in today's video that uh... These hose clamps take a 9.32nd socket. So, now you know, tell all your friends where to get useful automotive information.
Yeah. And no, my tank isn't sumped or anything, so once I get this all apart, it'll just come apart. It's not going to keep draining. But we are going to sump the tank. You're going to see how to do a budget sump with no welding. And it's not ghetto. It's done with a kit that I bought off of Amazon. Well, they sell them in a lot of other places too besides Amazon. Alright, the ghetto fuel system's out. I just cut it in a few places. That's out. I'm going to use my uh, quick disconnect tools to get it torn apart. Yeah. Awesome. It pulls out. And I had to finagle that one to get it in there. Alright guys, so the what I call the ghetto fuel system is gone. For some reason this light won't turn on. Oh, there it goes. And you can see the pump there. And where it's clamped onto the AN line to the factory fuel line. What's funny is I can't even pull the AN off the factory fuel line. So I don't think it was actually as ghetto as it looks because it didn't leak and it won't come off. Like I'll just have to throw away that piece, not where I'll cut it, but I don't really need a foot long piece of AN line anyway. So it's just pushed on and double clamped. But anyway. That's going to be it for today, so thank you for uh, stopping in. Don't forget to subscribe. Next video will change the oil, our P or not PSI, that's my harness, but our uh, Dakota Digital Gauges might be here already. But next video is mostly going to be like wire tucking and the oil change, stuff like that. And pretty soon we'll have this on the road. Trans should be back any day. Throw that in. Just I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.